Okay, there we go. Let me share my screen here. Uh, this is going to be fairly lengthy. I'm going to do a complete overview on the template and, and just like as if I was uh, working with one of my associates that I'm mentoring, which I've done a lot of these now. I've done over 30. And this template has really evolved and gotten more and more refined. And I'm sure it'll still continue to, but I feel like we've got a really good foundation right now. And that's why I decided I just wanted to share it now. Um, so let me go to, I just want to invite you to uh, uh, check out this video right here from Bob Proctor. It's called Three Simple Steps to Being, Doing, or Having Anything You Want. And he talks about, uh, about taking a, a, a fantasy that we have, like our vision, and we're going to be talking about the vision um, in, uh, in the podcast, in the Mechanic to Millionaire podcast. I talk a lot about Neville Goddard and the principle of assumption, uh, assuming the wish fulfilled, uh, that your dreams and your, and your vision that you're creating and putting out there is already done. It's already fulfilled. A lot of people think I say filled, F-I-E-L-D. It's fulfilled. Um, so assuming, it's the law of assumption. And it's basically along the lines of the law of traction and the law of vibration, excuse me. But I would really, it's only two minutes and 53 seconds. I was gonna play it here, but there was actually a thing be, uh, for lives that said don't use third party videos. Um, I'm sure Bob wouldn't mind. I love Bob Proctor. His, uh, you know, he's been, I would say, the living, leading, foremost expert on this. That has been the biggest living influence in my life. He's turned me on to a lot of the authors that are now, you know, um, no longer with us, but like Thomas Troward, Neville Goddard, um, just a lot of these great, you know, thinkers that have really contributed to my understanding that I now have of these principles. However, he's going to talk about and he really frames it up in a way that, you know, I guess it's a second witness, a more social proof um, for what I'm about to go into and the importance that I place on, you know, the vision casting and, and, and creating your vision. And as we go through, it really is the bulk of the template. And I'm going to go through and frame it up for you. Um, again, just like I have in mentoring people and helping them to frame it up, it has to be exact. You know, and so uh, just before I jump into all that, I just say this right here, uh, watch this video. Uh, he gives some great little pointers in there and some reasons why and just to help confirm and drive a little deeper the importance of it. But he talks about taking the fantasy, turning it into a theory, and then when it becomes a theory, we now have something to work with. Well, the, that's what the template's doing. It's taking something that's up here and what we want to create in our lives and what we want to uh, be, do, and have, and how we want to you know, uh, uh, progress and, and, and take what we kind of have in our, in our brain and literally get it down in black and white. And with the template, uh, I, I feel personally in, in my experience that this is the, it's the, it's the one of the clearest, most concrete, it doesn't leave anything to question the way it's framed up over the last few weeks and, and, and it puts you into a very clear action. Um, without, you know, any wondering or uh, having to try any guesswork. It takes the guesswork completely out of it. So uh, it, that, that desire that we have, it literally puts it down into the theory. So the theory would be the actual blueprint that you would hand over to a contractor and they build it exactly the way that you put it on the paper. And when it comes to vision work and, and really designing your life intentionally and on purpose, as a co-creator, um, it has to be exact. And I've been using the example, like let's say you, there's a contractor that lives in your town and he builds dream homes and he's known for doing like no cutting corners or anything. He just, he builds the, the most incredible custom homes for people. And so you, you, you're introduced to him, you have the money and you say, hey, I want you to make my dream home. I just wanna, every time I come home, I wanna feel like I'm coming home to Disneyland. It's just the happiest place. I'm just so thrilled every time I pull into that driveway. And so you give him permission to build your dream home. And he finishes the home, calls you up, you drive up, and you're like, I hate this house. It doesn't look anything like my dream. I mean, this is not even the style that I was thinking. And, and so where there was miscommunication, you, did, you just asked him to create your dream home. Well, his dream home may be completely different than what your dream home is. And so you didn't, you didn't give him the details. And I think a lot of people move forward in life and 
in their businesses and in our isogenics business uh, in that way. Maybe some details, but they leave out a lot of stuff. So a lot of important stuff. Like this has to be scientifically sound, like a blueprint when you're, when you're uh, doing the, the law of assumption and when you're reading through your vision and how you do that and how you frame it out. And so, okay, you learned your lesson, you got the blueprint, you put where the plugs go, the light switches, the kind of you know, lights you want in the house, where the windows are, where the doors are, and the rooms and the shape of the rooms and the pitch of that, the roof and, and how you like that to look. And then the front porch and just the whole landscaping and everything. You've got it on the blueprint, you give it to the guy and the contractor and, and he goes and builds your home. You pull up and you're like, yes, this is my dream home. This is it. Like, this is better than Disneyland. It's, you know, it's awesome. And you're so happy. And you go to go in the house and you reach for the doorknob on the handle and you're like, oh, I hate this doorknob. And you open the door and you go in and the same doorknob's on every door in the house. You're like, I hate that doorknob, right? And, and then you're, that's what catches your eye all the time. You're like looking at the doorknobs. You forgot to tell them about the doorknobs on the blueprint. And that may sound a little funny or, you know, a little exaggerated, but there's no exaggeration. It has to be detailed, you guys. And, and so we're going to lay that out. We'll go over how we actually do that. But that's the theory. You've got to get the fantasy into a theory. And now you can really work that theory. You can work that blueprint. And then it starts to manifest into a fact. It starts to become your experience in life. It starts to become the things that you're, you know, the circumstances, the situations, the scenarios, and the emotions that they create around that. Your physical world is mirror reflected what you had very clearly designed inside here, got onto the blueprint, and now you're utilizing the principle or the law of ass assumption. And, and what that, the, the law of assumption, that principle is actually kicks in the law of attraction. The law of attraction is more like a result. Uh, there are other things that attract to you those things. The law of attraction is like the end result. Like you did it, you attracted the things that you wanted to you but it doesn't really explain what are the principles involved to get those things to come to you. It's the end result. The law of attraction did that. Um, and that, that's a greater power. We're not going to go into that. We're going to go into the blueprinting and what you need to do on a practical application. Uh, there is other principles involved like the law of vibration and the law of compensation. And, and those have to be built in. If you don't even have any understanding of those, those laws and the definitions of them, good luck trying to frame that up in your blueprint and what you're gonna do on a daily basis, because there is something demanded of you every single day that you're going to do. You don't just pray and get. Pray is not about asking and getting. It's about preparing to receive yourself that prayer that's in your heart, the thing that you truly desire. And the catalyst to it is that you have to do your part first. And then God steps in and does these amazing, incredible miracles, uh, which Susan Sly calls the, the divine connections. And so, uh, the power that does that, it's God's power. And uh, that's what's keeping you alive. That's what's breathing you right now and bleaking your eyes and dividing your cells. You have no control over that, but yet it's keeping you alive. And so that's the same power that we're going to now be the catalyst to put into action in our behalf. All right. So intentionally. All right. So uh, I would, again, I would recommend watching this. So he talks about going from a fantasy to a theory and then to the fact. It actually becomes your life. So let's uh, close this down here. I'm going to pull up the uh, template here. And I'm just going to walk through this. And, and this is going to take some time to go through it. When I do it with somebody, you know, I'm working with people on my team that are financially linked to me. And, and uh, it's building my business. And so those other people I've been doing it with one-on-one. -on -one, but we want a million blenders going off in homes every morning, right? And so we've got to get this out there. We want to expand heaven on earth. And that's, you know, that's going to be company wide. We need to help, you know, and support as many people as we possibly can to accomplish these goals and, and dreams that I have, which many of you have as well. All right. So when I'm starting out, I want to get that first stepping stone. And, and what we're going to do is we're going to go from one to two, three, four, to five and frame all of this up and really the biggest ahas have been around this right here like even for people that have been doing their vision casting their vision boards and their their affirmations 
and they have a, you know, they have them right. And they're understanding that, that this part right here has been a game changer. And this is the five levels of leadership by John Maxwell. But even so framing stuff up here, um, we're still taking a lot of people to the next level, but there's not one person that hasn't had a huge aha right here, no matter how much they're making in nice Janet's, um, even doing it full time already. So let's go through, we'll frame it up and uh, I'm gonna give you some detail. We'll have the recording. Even when I do it one-on-one -on -one with somebody, I don't write down everything that I'm saying, but I'm going to try to bullet point some things. And, uh, but the recording is what I have them go back and listen to and frame it up the way that I'm sharing it with them. And I also get some feedback when I'm doing it with somebody one-on-one, -on -one. what are like, what is part of their vision? What's part of their goals? What's part of their desires? But right now I'm just gonna play uh, a singular role and just take that responsibility on singly. Um, all right, so uh, we start here at the top box. And what I wanna frame up is just that first stepping stone. And if somebody's already been in isogenics for a while and they're already at $500 a month in cycles, because that's what we're going for here is cycles. That's the 6%, that's residual passive income. That's the freedom. So we're taking bonuses and setting those aside and we're just going with cycles right here. So if they've already making over $500 a month, then we just go for you know, a good stepping stone above and beyond where they currently are. Um, so I'll, if, let's just say we're starting with a brand new person and I will start out with uh, $500 a month in cycles. So we'll just write the 500 in right here, 500 or more in cycles a month. So 500 or more, that would be uh, a little, that would be like 10 cycles. 10 cycles would be a little bit more. That's our commission. If you're new to isogenics, they pay us in increments and they call them cycles. So uh, that would be 10 cycles plus. You always want that or more. So we're gonna frame this. What we're gonna do is uh, frame it up as, I'm so happy and grateful now that I am receiving more than $500 a month in cycles in my isogenics business. So that's more than 10 cycles a week or a month, I mean. So 10 cycles plus a month. And so what I would ask now is like, what are some of the things you'd be doing with that money that's coming in? Cause this is extra money, right? You're replacing your food, which is actually, you're saving money there. So this is extra money. And uh, in, in addition to what you normally bring in. So people would say, well, you know, I'm expanding my icy pantry. I'm buying more products. Uh, we're getting them for my kids, my family. I'm so grateful that, you know, and excited and, and it's amazing that we're able to do this now. Uh, so with this extra money, we're expanding more products and getting more of the family on it. And you want to use buzzwords because what you want to create here, it's so important to institute the law of vibration, uh, which is really what it starts attracting things to you. We want a state. We want to get you into a state, a certain feeling that you're having. And we use certain words when we're, having an awesome state. So awesome is a word. So I just want to put these as buzzwords that we're going to intertwine or mingle with each of the bullet points. Like you can't say them enough. So when you're, you know, when things are going just fantastic, we say things like I'm excited. It's awesome. It's incredible. And I think that, that you could use these like, uh, like NLP words, but they're really describing a state that you're in. It's a result. So um, we want to create that state by using some of these words that we would use if we were in that state. It helps to trigger and initiate that state while you're reading this. And you want to get familiar with how that feels, and then you want to start to be that ultimately is the goal. That's so incredible. It's fantastic. You know, terrific. Uh, uh, just different words that you can come up with that would um, bring that up. I might say some more that I haven't written down here. So... It's so awesome that I now get to expand my isopantry for my kids and they get to have, you know, the nutrition as well. And it's changing their lives, which is, you know, they're doing better in school. They have better focus. Their health is better. They're healthier. They're, you know, their wellness. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm so grateful for this $500 that's coming in or more every month because I, I'm paying down my debt. Like we're getting out of debt. So we're, 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 we're creating more financial freedom, creating more financial freedom. We are going out more. We're going out more and we're, we're doing recreational activities. 
You know, we, we go to the movies, we go to restaurants that we've wanted to go to. Uh, when I go to the clothes store, I'm buying some of the clothes that I, and the outfits and the shoes that I wasn't able to buy before. Uh, this extra money has really made it, you know, given us this, this freedom to be able to enjoy life, be engaged in life more, go to um, some, maybe some short vacations. Remember the $500 is coming in every month. So if you saved up for three months, there's 1500 bucks if you didn't even touch your ISA account. And uh, now you can go on a nice little vacation that you can pay for cash, right? You're just going to pay for it with your debit card because you have that extra cash. Uh, maybe helping with the car payment, or maybe you bought a new car with that $500 a month. You know, what are some of the things that would just make you excited? Tony Robbins talks about what's the gift. We don't want to eliminate things. That doesn't, you don't really get excited about making goals to eliminate, like I'm going to lose weight. So I'm going to stop eating certain things. We're being proactive and creative here. So what's the gifts that you're going to have because this extra $500 a month or more is coming in every month, every month, every month, all right? So uh, you, you could place a date on there, but I wouldn't put the date on there in your affirmation. I would just say, you know, that's the goal that you really are gonna push yourself. On this other slide here, I have 30, 60, 90. I don't like using dates. Um, I like to just push as hard as I can um, for 30 days and then 60 days, and then 90 days, because that's really, you know, the law of manifestation. Things are happening within the 30 days when I put that kind of commitment in. Um, so whatever works for you more to keep in that state and just to really commit to excellence, all right? 30, 60, 90 is what I use. Uh, but if a date does it for you, go ahead, but don't put the date because that wouldn't be the law of assumption. Just put that somewhere else or just know that, hey, I want to accomplish this by celebration. And so you're really going to drive for excellence. You're not going to say, you know, I'm making $500 a month by uh, celebration. That's not the law of assumption. The way you're reading this here is I'm already so happy and grateful. It's already happened. So you're uh, like uh, Jim Carrey and, and Will Smith says, you have to be delusional when you do this. It's like a dream, but the dream is your reality. Okay. So we're not framing it up as it's going to happen. It's already done. It's happened. You're making $500 or more. Now, what we want to do is go to step two, go from one to two, is we get to frame up our customers now. We just framed up a fantasy right here. This is the fantasy, but it's a reality, and it creates a state within us. And we're going to use those state words. You know, I'm so, it's so exciting that my kids get to go to the school, the private school that we wanted them to go to with this extra $500 or more that's coming in every month. That is so awesome. I mean, it's just amazing that we get to do that, right? So we're creating that state. Now we get to have the fantasy about our customers. And you want to dream of that highest, grandest version. And some people are, I'll use for lack of a better term, but maybe to be a little more contrasted, incapable of dreaming up what the awesome customers look like and what does their awesome customer base look like. Look, over 80% of the money that Isagenix has made the $8 billion that we're coming up on, that's mostly customers. 85% of people in isogenics are customers. So what should your customer base look like? Or what can it look like? And if it's a fantasy, why not make it the highest, grandest version you can? So we're going to transition down from, you know, my kids get to go to the private school now and we're paying for our brand new car payment, right? And it's just so awesome because we have amazing customers. So amazing customers. So because we have amazing customers. So that's transitioning now from where I'm talking about my vision and to why we have this $500 a month or more coming in. Well, we have amazing customers who, let me go with black, who love the products. They've made them a lifestyle. There's the lifestyle here. Uh, they've had amazing transformations. They are passionate. They're committed to these products. In fact, they made them a lifestyle and they're expanding their ISA pantry and they just can't stop talking about it. And, and uh, you know, uh, my customers are sharing successfully. You know, they're walking, talking billboards. They are so passionate about their transformations and how they feel. Their energy is up. They're getting work that they've been putting off at work. They're getting it done. Those stacks of paper, they said they just got right through them. I have people telling me that they pulled the refrigerator out and started cleaning behind the refrigerator because their energy is so amazing and, and they feel better, their mental clarity and their focus. And when they get home at night, they still have energy, excuse me, they still have energy 
they're playing with the kids. They're playing Uno. They're playing Yahtzee. They go to the park. They're hiking. They're riding bikes. They're going to the gym because they just feel so good. They want to. They don't, they don't, they don't feel like they have to. They want to. That's how good they feel. Their transformations have been amazing. And they're expanding their eyes and pantries. And they're sharing with their family who loves and cares and supports them. And they're getting on the products too, and they're having amazing transformations. And they're loving, they're expanding their isopantries and, and their lives are up leveling. They're getting so much more done and their relationships are improving because they're, they have more energy and that mental clarity. They're excited all the time. They just have an incredible attitude. It really is bringing heaven to earth in their homes. It's expanding it. And, and, and they're sharing successfully with coworkers and, and uh, people at church and their neighbors and strangers, you know, their cousins, their relatives, they're sharing successfully with these people and they're all having amazing results and they're making isogenics a lifestyle. It's so awesome. It's incredible that they're getting their products paid for. They're not even like committed to like, I want to do this business. They're just sharing so successfully. They're wondering how they're making the extra, this money that's coming in because they're hitting consultant, they're hitting uh, managers, crystal managers, crystal consultant. They don't even know how the money's showing up. They're just so passionate about the products that, you know, they're getting these commissions and they're enrolling people to get them started on the products that they're so excited about. And it's so amazing. My customer base is growing so much that my cycles are going up more and more now. And I don't even know who a lot of these customers are. I mean, this is an amazing life that I get to live. I am so grateful for Isogenics and what we're doing in the world. And and what's happening for me and my family financially and in every other way. It's improved every area of our lives. And this customer base that's growing beyond even my awareness is so amazing because, and here's the transition. So because my customer base is growing, I don't even know who they are. Um, and, and for those reasons that we stated, but also because, and we'll go from customer base up to business partners, because I have amazing business partners. So amazing business partners. And maybe you don't have any business partners yet, but this is a fantasy, right? And we're getting the fantasy into a theory right here. We're putting it out in paper and black and white. And I told people, you know, the three by five cards, I kept those companies in business. But as I've been doing this, I remembered it wasn't three by five cards in the beginning because I wrote these things out, not in bullet points. I wrote them out in sentences like I was writing a book. It's sentences and paragraphs and chapters, right? This is a chapter, the chapter of me and my family and what it's doing for us with this extra income that's coming in, the chapter on the customers. And I just wrote them, wrote them seamlessly and, and flowingly where they transitioned one into another. And I did that on legal pads. So I guess really I kept the legal pad companies in business in the beginning. And I just read that every day. Some of you have seen my dream book that I did before Isogenics, which really is what, how I got into Isogenics because of that book. I wrote it the same way. And I just read it every morning, every night. And then I thought about it and, and would call it to memory as much as I could through the day. But in the morning, for sure, I, would, I read it sentence by sentence. And I just flipped the pages. And they got wrinkly and they got wore out. But as I was reading through them, I was also having better ideas, a higher, grander version, or making it even more defined. Like, I forgot the doorknob right here. Let me write that in. They just started, I started tapping into that. And so I was writing it in on the legal pad. And then as I read that so much, and I could just turn the page and I already knew what every sentence was, then I thought, you know what, instead of carrying this legal pad around with me, I'll just transfer over some bullet points to the three by five cards. And then that will remind me and trigger me during the middle of the day, and I don't have to carry around that big legal pad. So that's how the three by five cards came in, and then I put them on a ring and punched holes in them. So you're writing it in sentences and you're reading it every day, not like reading or writing it and then putting it in a drawer leaving it to where it collects dust, okay? So now we're gonna go in and create a chapter on the business partners. They're amazing, amazing business partners who are so focused, committed, excited. Um, uh, they're passionate about it. Like this is what they've been looking for their whole life. They just feel like, like, like Isogenics is it, right? And, and so they love the products for sure. Um, but they also love sharing the products with people and they see the opportunity with this. So my business partners are building incredible organizations right now with or without me. You know, they, they see the vision. They got Isogenics inside of them and now they're building proactively. They're self-motivated. They're hungry. 
and they're doing the do and they're doing it successfully. They're building their organization successfully. Uh, you know, they're, uh, they're paying off their debt. They're, uh, they're doing the extracurricular activities. They're going on vacations. They're in fact, some of them in my downline have bought their dream homes because people in your organization could be making more money than you. Right. And so what I did when I realized and understood this, I drew two little legs, well, not two little legs. I drew two legs on that legal pad and I put right team and left team. And I just drew out like the legs were breaking off and you know, their people were becoming consultants. And then I did that on the left side as well. And I put ISA millionaire on my right leg. I wasn't even cycling 20 times a week. And I put ice a millionaire because it's you're like, if that one leg takes off, I never have to put anybody on there ever again. Right. Because I get paid 6% on everybody. So if an ice a millionaire is down here and they're making more money than me, what does that mean about my right leg and the volume that's coming up? It means it's done. And literally my first millionaire right there on the right leg. And before I did way before I did. And so and we'll come back to that later um, on why and how that showed up when we get down to the, the fifth uh, point there. Um, that's such a huge blessing. So, um, they could be, uh, buying their dream homes before you do, they could be firing their boss. So I wrote that in, you know, they're, they're buying their dream homes. They're buying their dream cars. They're taking their dream vacations. They're doing isogenics full time. So people in my downline in my organization are doing isogenics full time. Um, they're living their dream life that this is their passion. They're, they're building, uh, you know, incredible, successful organizations. They're training from the stage. In fact, this ISA millionaire was training on the stage way before me, years before I did. And again, we'll come back to that. Um, that's awesome. You want to celebrate that. Um, they're doing it full time. They're, they have amazing teams. Uh, they're bringing in so many people and leaders. They're developing leaders that I don't even communicate with their leaders. They're, they're generations away from me in my organization. And, and so as I come from this box, I'm building, building, building. Then I jump into here and I'm building, building, building. By the time I get over here, of course, I have that kind of organization. I mean, did you see how big and, and how grand that I, and, and broad and the spectrum that I made out of the customers? Of course, I have other leaders that have helped to build that. And now I'm coming into it, turning that theory into a fact, very specifically, not leaving out any of the doorknobs. Um, and again, this is a fantasy. You just give yourself permission to do this because this is what you have to do. Um, what comes first, the identity? Or you work yourself there and then you get the identity. You guys, the identity has to come first before it shows up in the outside. As on the inside, so on the outside. Not on the outside and then you start to get that on the inside. You have to get it on the inside first. And it's a mirror reflection on the outside and a mirror is like perfect, right? And it's reflection. So. Build that up. Those business partners, what are they doing? They're training. They have amazing organizations. And I'm not even texting. I don't have to pull anybody along in any of this. They're building the organization. And, and so as I come out of this, and you can do more detail around those business partners and what they're doing and the, and the customers and how their business partners are growing and expanding. Like I have platinum income earners in my organization. People, I have, so what I did as this lady started growing faster, I'm like, okay, I'm going to throw in, you know, one star, two star, four star. We'll have some platinums over here. We'll have some five stars. We'll have some seven stars. We'll have some three stars, six stars, and one star, one star, two stars, right? And then that started to happen. Then I finally got wise and I put ice and millionaire over here on the left leg. Thank you, Jojo Bennington, for showing up. Um, so uh, now as I'm leaving, I'm going to transition now into the freedom day. And by the time I'm coming out of the business partners, it's like my freedom day, I have such a high level of certainty because look at my organization and how it's rocking. So there's this, and, and so I know my freedom day is like, it's coming, like it's done. So there's this level of certainty as I'm coming into my freedom day. So like I could put a done right here, freedom day with a green check mark, it's done because I built up incrementally and I'm agreeing with it. I'm getting into the fantasy and I can see how this fantasy is a fact. Like there's no question this would be a reality. 
with an organization that's going like that, with leaders like that, that have leaders that I don't even connect with, I don't even text them, I don't have to follow up with them, they're doing all of that in their own organization. Well, of course I'm gonna have certainty here then. So then we wanna frame up the Freedom Day and we wanna go right into it. Now, we know that there's this sense of, it's not here yet, but it's coming. These, my two legs are like two trains going downhill, like two trains that are in momentum. Both legs, two trains going downhill that can't be stopped. They've built up the momentum. So the Freedom Day, you know, it, unless they're already past this, past this, they would have to frame up their Freedom Day at a higher amount, but I'm gonna say six-figure income. So, so it's done. My Freedom Day, it's assured. Uh, that six-figure income, it's done. Like I, I am cycling over a six-figure income and I suggest would be a three star so that's uh over two thousand so what i put is over two thousand dollars a week and i would frame that up accurately as i'm i'm three star moving into four star i mean i'm three star plus so three star in isogenics that means you're cycling 40 plus times a week 40 times a week so I, uh, it's done. Like the six-figure income is here. I'm receiving over two thousand dollars a week. Uh, that's three star. I've hit three star over forty cycles uh, a week. Do you see how I just framed it up? From my freedom day is assured. It's done. I mean, it's coming. There's two trains to. I'm cycling over forty times a week. Now I just said I'm cycling over forty times a week. What we want to do is we want to create the identity, and this is key right here. We want the identity because the identity comes first. And I've done it without, in a way that this theory, it totally makes sense. If my leg, two legs are in momentum like that, it's just a matter of time. And when a farmer plants a seed and, it, and he knows what the seed is, the farmer absolutely knows with absolute certainty that that's what they're gonna harvest at harvest time. So there's this sense of certainty when they plant the seed that they're, they say they plant corn, at harvest time, they're going to reap corn. It's just they know that. And so that's what we've done here. And the farmer's identity is that, so the farmer actually follows through with the actions, and every needful thing shows up. So we want to create that identity with certainty here. And so we've got the certainty. Now it's I'm cycling over 40 times a week. I've hit three-star. I'm on my way to four-star because my team's in momentum, and now we have freedom. I fired my, my boss. I, I'm doing isogenics full-time. So now it's I'm doing isogenics full time, not the people in my downline. So I'm full time. We're, li we're living in our dream home. Uh, we get to do what we want when we want. We have the unrestricted for use of time and money because that's passive residual income that's coming in now and it's more than you were making at your job. Profits are better than wages and residual and leverage and all of that. So I'm full time. We're taking the vacations that we've always wanted to take and we're paying cash as we go on it. Thank you, Isogenics. I am so grateful now that I'm a three-star working on going to four-star now. And it's just like its momentum is carrying me there. We're receiving over $2,000 a week, over $8,000 a month. And you can just fill that in with all the bullet points. I mean, what are you doing with 2,000? Of course, I mean, I wasn't at a six-figure income when we moved into our dream home that I'm sitting in right now. And uh, we had, oh man, well, I think some of you know the story of how we got into this home. Um, but in nine months, um, it was all because of this, doing this, and I created the identity. Um, some of you know that I took a picture in front of a home with my family, and then I dreamed about that being our home, and I scripted that fantasy into a fact in my dream book. And we actually ended up buying a brand new home right here in the neighborhood where we took that picture. Um, it's just awesome. It's like Twilight Zone. So uh, frame this up with as much amazing stuff. You know, you're, 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 you're tithing to your church. You're helping charitable causes. You're going out to restaurants. You don't even look at the prices in the menus. You're going to restaurants that you want to go to. When you go clothes stop shopping, you don't look at the price tags. You just say, what, what do I want? You know, what, what, what is it that looks the best? And you just grab it and you buy it and, you know, you get to experience life on this level. So frame that up. And, and this is not the ultimate. We're going into the ultimate next, but this is your freedom day. You know, so I would say for most people, 90% of them, you know, people, uh, a six-figure income would give them a freedom day. So what are all the things you're doing? And what are all the things you're experiencing? You wanna go deeper here. Like what are the reasons for that now? 
it's not the material things. Those, you know, can give us a sense of happiness and a sense of accomplishment, but it wears off. You know, it's the person that you're developing into. So you could say, you know, I just am so grateful for the leader that I've developed into and for my kids to be able to see that and how they can see their dreams can become a reality. And, uh, you know, I've just learned how to, you know, discipline myself. And now I'm a catalyst for change in my family and for my team and what I'm holding out now. You know, the deeper meanings and the value, the progress that we're creating for ourselves, that's really what we're after. And those are the gifts that you're going to give to yourself, like those things that really mean a lot to you, your kids and your family and, and uh, you know, your team members and, and uh, what that means because you're now um, role modeling for them and what it means to be a catalyst for change. I mean, all of this change that has taken place started with you and, and the value that you're adding, okay? So you want to frame up into it the things that if I don't do this, what would I miss out on? What would I lose? Um, you know, sometimes people need to look at it that way. If I don't do this, what is it that I'm missing out on? But you could also look at it from the proactive stance of look what I've done. Look what I've accomplished. Look at the legacy that I'm leaving. I built a legacy organization that is changing lives in hundreds and thousands of homes across the country, people that I don't even know. But I know that they're succeeding because they're, you know, they're being spotlighted in isogenic. So, and um, so just frame that up that way. All right. Now, we're going to come down to here. We're going to go from the Freedom Day to where this is a big aha for a lot of people. So, we're going to come down and we're going to go right to the top of level four. So, in John Maxwell's leadership development, we're at level four here now, which is people development. And I ask people, you know, what would you do now that you're at level four leadership? What would you be doing? What's your identity? So if we're going to go from A, A to B, you know, you're now at B. You've arrived. You're there. What would you be doing as a level four leader who has this freedom day lifestyle? Like, I am a level four leader. And every single time. They've increased the work that they have to do to get here. So they'd be like, well, I'd be working with a lot more people. I'd be training a lot more people. I would be mentoring a lot more people. I would be doing more meetings. I would be uh, enrolling more people. And, and it just I, like I would be doing a lot more hours during the day to get there. And I'm saying, OK, you, what comes first, the identity or you work yourself there? And then you get the identity. And if I frame that up right, they're like, well, yeah, it makes sense that you'd have to have the identity first. And I'm like, absolutely. So you have to have the identity first. So remember, we're putting the fantasy into a theory and then into a fact before it's actually happened. The law of assumption. We must institute the law of assumption, the principle. Otherwise, you'll never get here. So you're already there, a level four leader. And let me just tell you, you would not be doing any of those things that you just mentioned. You're there. You've arrived. You people developed. You've got people who have arrived and they're four level leaders. And if they're four level leaders, that means they're creating four level leaders. You're doing whatever you want. And more than likely, you're traveling the world. You know, if you can have, do, and be anything you want, are you going to be out there trying to motivate people and inspiring them and, and, and micromanaging all of these different steps? No. You wouldn't be doing, you don't have to do any of that. You're already there. You've developed the type of organization that's growing on its own now. And Robert Kiyosaki talks about that in the cash flow quadrant. So, you know, here's employee, here's self-employed, big business. So he says big business, this is where you want to be is on the right side of the cash flow quadrant. You can leave your business unannounced for six weeks and it does as good or better while you're gone. Why? Because you have developed other leaders who are taking care of and managing the business. Now in this industry and in isogenics, they're not managing your business, they're managing their own business, but they're fourth level leaders. And so they're developing and helping people to move up through these ranks and developing fourth level leaders. Everybody starts at the beginning, right? But they are capable of attracting and bringing in those kind of leaders and also developing people and bringing them up to level three and level four leaders. So you're doing whatever you want now, you've arrived. You have to have the identity of a fourth level leader if you're ever going to create your freedom day. 
and you have to have a level four identity now. And that's what I developed. I didn't know I can go back in hindsight now and show you and speed up this whole process through articulating and showing you on this graph and dialoguing. And we could speed it up much faster. You know, the things that I went through reading the books and the mentors and lots of reading books from authors who have gone and, you know, passed away and have been long gone. But I put a lot of time and effort and energy into that. So now we could just frame it up and get you to start developing the identity. The only way you could I you can create the identity of being here before you're there is mental. It's the only way. So not only is it the fastest way to get to point A to point B, it's the only way to get from point A to point B. And some people take the slow process. Uh, they have a little win here and a little win there. So it creates their confidence, which improves their identity incrementally. And then they, you know, they, they're positive and they know that they shouldn't pay attention to negative people and don't let them steal their dreams. They've been to the seminars and now they're disciplining their mind to ignore the negative people and to discipline their disappointments. And they had another win. And so now their identity is just inching forward like a snail and it's just incrementally growing. Now, some people have done that before they even got into isogenics and they've built the skills. Some people are inching forward, some people, they've never developed the discipline and incrementally move themselves forward in their identity. And so they stay stuck. They never reach their freedom day. They didn't know that it was a mental process. You don't earn your way there and you don't create the identity as you're going along. You create the identity and then the next thing shows up. Well, what if you could jump from here to here right away in your first week in isogenics? It's the greatest labor saving device. Why? Because once you have the identity, Every needful thing has to show up, the law of attraction. It mandates and dictates that every needful thing has to show up. And we can use an acorn. Bob Proctor uses an acorn. I remember putting in the VHS on Bob Proctor and he talked about the acorn. He says it has his, its patterned plan, its blueprint, but it's fixed in the acorn. The acorn can't change it. It doesn't have the mental faculties like we do as offspring of God, as children of God. We have the mental faculties to change our blueprint, right? Our identity. We have imagination, intuition, memory, reason, perception, the will. Those are all what Bob Parker wrote a book, You Were Born Rich. We were born with the mental faculties to change our identity, our blueprint. An acorn can't do that. But he says, does an acorn have an oak tree in it? Or is it, in its, is it out there in the universe? Is it in its environment? And the, the, the oak tree is not in the acorn. But it does have a pattern plan. And it's called a vibration. That blueprint that God put into designing an acorn can only vibrate one way, one frequency. That's it, oak tree. But the oak tree is not in the acorn. But it will attract to it like a magnet every needful thing that it needs. And it, won't, and it can't be stopped. It has to be attracted to it. Once it gets put in that environment where it starts to vibrate, water, soil, it just starts to attract. He said, if you had the right microscope, like a quantum physics microscope, you would see stuff from the air, stuff from the soil, marching to it like ants, because it's attracting it because of the vibration. So if we could take our identity that we have now and do the work, do the mental discipline and create the identity of a level four leader, guess what must show up by law? It has to show up. Now it doesn't do all the work for you, there are things that you have to do. That's why we have income producing activities. That's why we have this framed up in a certain way. When you take the fantasy and turn it into a fact, you have to have certain things in the blueprint. And I know what those are because I've done it and I've helped others do it. And it's in here, the law of compensations in here, the law of vibrations in here, the law of non-resistance is in here. We'll talk about the law of non-resistance right here. The law of compensation is, in order to receive something, you must give something first. So that's all built into here. We have all of the parameters that people wouldn't even know to build in there. And if you leave some of those out, it isn't going to work. And trust me, there's going to be work for you to do, but we have these other parameters that speed everything up and make it much, I guess you could say easier, like the right doors start opening up, the divine doors instead of the doors closing, which you don't really have control only in your identity, but who's showing up, that's just uh, the result of who you're being. 
So once you have the right identity, the right doors start showing up now where you were running into closed doors before the doors are opened up. They come right in. Here's what you've been looking for. Here's the person you've been waiting for to show up. Uh, here's the information you needed. Here's the skill you needed and how to develop it. And they just open right up. Well, we're just getting started here, right? I said this is going to go a little bit longer, but this is the PhD level and I don't want to make a part two. We're just going to do it all right here. So this may take you some time. Well, it's going to take you some time. Um, and, and, and watching this and, and, and over and over and seeing the different parts that you'll catch the second time and the third time. So, all right, so we're gonna create the identity, but we have to give something first. So again, we have all of these parameters framed up in here. So this isn't like taking the work out of it. Don't think, oh, this is, sounds hokey, you know, and this is just too easy, no. But you'll start getting the results and you'll start accomplishing your goals because the right doors open up when you frame it up right. I call it going from one magnificent win to the next. All right, so we frame it up. Not only is it the greatest labor saving device and the fastest way to get to A to B is just to create the identity, um, but it's the only way. It is absolutely the only way. So whether you do the snail's pace or you negate it and you never get there, or you go from A to B really quickly, that's up to you. All right, now you know. So what we wanna do is we wanna create that level four identity and we have to script that out. So I'm gonna give you some of the essential ingredients that need to be in there. So as you're coming down um, from this Freedom Day, as we're coming down here, and we're, it, what we wanna do is we just wanna, you know, two trains going downhill, it can't be stopped. I'm so grateful for the more than $2,000 that's coming in every week now. And it's just absolutely amazing. I am just so grateful for everything that Isogenics has offered in my development, my self-actualization. I am a high fourth level leader. So there it is, there's the identity I am. Now we have to give confirming evidences behind that, but there it is, that's the statement. That's what we're gonna work into. I am a high fourth level people development leader. I have created or built or developed an elite organization. Why do I call it elite? Because that rings something to me. It tells me something. Uh, John Maxwell, who wrote The Five Levels of Leadership, which I recommend reading, on the fourth level leader, he says they create elite organizations. So an elite organization is, again, that you know, you've created leaders who are creating leaders. And if you leave, it runs just fine. You don't have to check in every five minutes. You don't have somebody calling you saying, what do we do now? They're, they're handling it all on their own. Now, remember, though, in isogenics, it's not my business that they're building, which it is, but it's their business that they're minding and tending to. And so I built an elite organization with high uh, level three and four leaders who have developed level three and level four leaders and it just keeps duplicating just keeps duplicating and it's so far away from me i have millionaires in my organization platinum income earners making over forty thousand dollars a month uh, we see each other in the platinum room but i don't really have any relationship with them i don't you know i don't text with them but i know they're in my organization and there's so many there's hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands of, of customers in our customer base, you know, that's creating uh, this residual passive income of over $13,500 a week. You're maxed out. My organization, so my organization is maxed out. Over 200, let me put that in red, maxed out with over 250 cycles a week. That's a maxed out organization. You'd actually, if you want to have it exact, it's $13,522 that they would be depositing into your bank every week. And it gets to be, when you hit like four star, you can give them your bank account, they'll deposit it right into your bank account. And you would be a corporation by then, so it's right deposited right into my corporate account at my bank, name the bank, have pictures of your bank, um, on your, you know, along with this, you want visual stuff too. So. I maxed out at over 250 cycles a week. I have people in my organization that are maxed out. I have platinum income earners. And, and when I was doing this with some, uh, someone, I said, 
you wouldn't even be micromanaging any of this stuff. Like you're on a safari, you go on a safari for two weeks and you have your biggest week ever in isogenics. Well, that's a true statement. That happened for me and Carrie with our organization. We hit 11 star. We went from 10 star to 11 star while we were in Africa on a two week safari. Wasn't texting anybody. And so as I was saying that to somebody, they said, I don't even know how to write that out. I don't even know how to imagine because you feel with your identity, you have to work your way there. Well, then that's not the identity and you're not going to get there. If you have to work your way there, then you're looking at it as I have to get there and I have to scratch and crawl and I have to pull teeth and try to get people to show up for the meetings and to get people on the Zoom and to share. You know, we've already framed it out, you guys. You have customers who are already sharing successfully. They're getting their products paid for and they haven't even decided to do the business yet. They're wondering how this money showed up, right? So um, they're wondering how to write that out. Well, how you better, I mean, right? So we're framing it up now where you can see where we can get to this point. But I just want to contrast that it's going to try and sneak in. You're going to be like, well, I just, I got to get, I got to do more income producing activities now. No, you don't. Create the identity where you're already there. And then frame that up with the compelling evidences. We're totally living in our dream home now. We brought, you have a dream home on the beach now. You have a cabin in the mountains. Whatever you want to do with that money, you're, you're paying for your kid's college. You're paying for their apartment. You're, you know, you're buying them cars. And, and you're really allowing the opportunities like what are the opportunities that are now there for you and your family and for your team what are all the opportunities that they just are so grateful for that's the identity of a fourth level leader they're not thinking about i've got to get people to do this or i've got to motivate them to that and they're not doing it that's not their identity their identity is i'm living an amazing fairy tale dream come true life i get to do what i I have the unrestricted free use of time, money, and resources. I get to do what I want, when I want, for as long as I want. So when we got home from the safari, we decided we're going to go to Disneyland. We're going to have an all-inclusive for the entire family, fly everybody in, get four rooms at the Disneyland Hotel, pay for all the food, all the extra acti activities, all the things that we're going to buy in Disneyland. And we paid for that. An impromptu vacation. And then a month later, we went to Europe, another impromptu vacation. Right, so those are the types of things you would be doing as a fourth level leader. Now, this is important. Remember, if we go back up to the top, we're like faded out of this now. This was like something of the past. But you're you're literally, in reality, trying to get to four. You're going to get to four five hundred dollars a month. So what you got to do is you got to straddle this identity of where you are here, and you can't let the fantasy become so real that you're not taking the actions that you need to do. Your team in reality hasn't uh, evolved to this position. That kind of BV and products are not moving in your organization. But here's the difference. You're doing this with a whole different attitude. The micromanaging and making sure that people are getting trained and they're getting inspired and educated, you have to be doing that. You can't let the fantasy overtake you and you just sit back and you do nothing. Uh, what is it, a dream without work is just a wish? Um, but work without a dream is a nightmare. Why? Because you never create the identity. But we got to make sure it's not just a dream that we're literally taking that on. We're excited. We could feel it. Like we've created the state. That's where you're after here is state. We've created the state. We're using the words. We're feeling it. Like if you could recall something back that you've done in your life that just immediately you go into that state. For me, I talk about when I hit a home run. And it didn't just go over the fence at the Little League Park. It went over the house. There was only one other person that had ever done that at that park. And so I could recall that moment and what it was like to run around the bases and the person who found the ball on the other side in the neighborhood and ran it back and gave it to me, you know, what people were saying. I could go back into that state and relive it and, and, and literally relive it. Uh, that's what you want here. You want to create that state. And on the next page, um, Tony Robbins in the 30 days for the next 30 years of your life. He says you want, when you're reviewing your vision daily, he says it's a must. It must be daily. You want to feel it, experience it, live it, and connect to it. And now you're creating the state. And that's like you really have a, received it. Now you really are grateful for it in that moment. And anybody that is grateful for something that they haven't yet received, as though they have received it, is exercising perfect faith.
and we know for you, you, you those of you out there like me that are of faith, um, uh, that faith moves mountains. You could walk on water with the right amount of faith. You could part the, you know, the Red Sea with the right kind of faith. So miracles start to happen for those that exercise faith. And you don't have to know how those miracles are going to happen. They just, they show up. All right. So uh, let's see what else did I want to say here. So frame that up now. Um, and just script that out again in sentences, right? And you're going to read those sentences. And I've had some people make me cry as they've gone through these five steps. Um, absolutely amazing. Um, all right. So once we have all that framed up, there are some things that we have to do. Now, we know the company offers great products that add value to people's lives. And they have an a compensation plan that gives an opportunity financially that adds value to people's lives. But you as a leader have to offer value to the people that are going to show up. Just like the acorn. When you get to the state where you absolutely can feel and believe and experience these high level three and level four leaders that are platinum on both of your legs so you're maxed out, by law, they have to show up. And they will start showing up, but this is how it works. So, and when those level four leaders show up, you have to be ready. You have to be ready to offer the value. And this is what's going to be your part, right? You have to work, you have to develop, you have to gain some skills. But there's some skills that you can develop right away that will, well, let me just go through the process. So where the wrong people have been showing up are the people that haven't been helping you build the organization the way you wanted it to because you didn't create the identity, but now you are. These level four leaders are going to start showing up. And when they show up, they are 100% dependent on you like a baby is dependent on the parent to keep it alive. The baby can do nothing for an infant can do nothing for itself to keep itself alive. It's 100% dependent on the parent. These level four leaders, the first ones that come in, and you need one on your right and one on your left, right? So we'll, we'll we frame that up and it evolves over time. But uh, when they show up, they're 100% dependent on you. And I'll go over exactly what they're dependent on. I already know that. So we're going to build it in on the skill that you need to develop. And it's doable. If you're hungry, you'll do it. Here's the difference. When these level four leaders show up, so level three and four level leaders show up, it's different this time. They already have the skills to be a level four leader. That's why they showed up. They already have the skills. And they just haven't found isogenics yet. And now you're going to be the link, like that spider web that weaves. There's so many turns and, 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 and uh, different turns that you can't see. It's out of your view, but they will find them their way to you. They have to by law, just like the acorn. You see them in there, just like the acorn sees itself as an oak tree. They have to show up. And they do. It's been the most amazing thing. It's like the Twilight Zone. Um, so when they show up, they already have the skills, but they're dependent on you to inspire them. But rather than having to motivate them after they catch the vision, when they catch the vision and they have certainty that isogenics is the vehicle they've been looking for their whole life, they're off to the races. They go from here to here, one month, two months, three months, by four months, they like, okay, so when that level four leader showed up in my organization, they were dependent on me. And when I showed them what I'm about to show you, they had certainty. And then I, I worked with that leader for probably three or four months, flew out there about every other week and showing them how things work, how to enroll somebody, how the compensation plan works, how to explain the compensation plan, um, you know, how to get to consultant and all of that stuff that goes along with our business. The difference here was they're just observing, they're taking it all in, and then all of a sudden they're like, get out of my way, you're slowing me down. Now that person didn't say that, but they stopped calling me because they could go much faster than I could take them. So rather than waiting for me to come out every two weeks to do a meeting or when I'm available to do a three-way call, they're doing two meetings a day. They're doing their own three-way calls now. And they're doing it better than I did. Why? Because they've developed in reality the level three and level four skills. They showed up with the skills. 
And when they get an isogenics, they just launch. We've seen it happen over and over. And uh, they have better skills than I do, like literally practical on hand skills to build the business. And that's why they're training before I was. Years before I was, they were asked to be on the stage. They were asked to be on the corporate calls because they literally have the skills on how to articulate stuff. And I only had it in my identity mentally, but there was a skill that I had that I had my hands wrapped around that I could do. I'm gonna show you that right now because you it's your responsibility to give this level three and level four leader certainty that their dreams are gonna be a reality with isogenics. They absolutely know because you educated them and you inspired them on the level they need it. So how do we do that? All right, so just framing that theory up, you see how that works? When we have the identity, they must show up. Now it might not be the person that you enrolled that showed up, but they're the link to the level three and four leader. So don't be discouraged when you're still gonna have you know, the challenge is because you still have a sense of that identity where you were down here. It's still subconsciously in you. You're going to work to ultimately overcome that. But while you're working on this identity and doing it, there's still going to be challenges. Not every single person is going to say yes. And not every single person is going to be that level three and level four leader. There will be those that quit on you. And what I've seen, which is pretty, you know, amazing is like the person that I attracted that I'm working with. Let's say that's the person enrolled or maybe it's a second generation person that comes in, but you're the leader, so you were introduced to them. They introduce you to somebody who introduces you to somebody, and that's the person that you're gonna work with. That's the fourth level leader. And this person quit. Maybe even that person quit. It was just the way that you needed to be linked to them. So you've always gotta discipline your disappointments when you're working on your state, because what looks like a tragedy wasn't a tragedy at all. And, uh, you know, when, you're, when your state is in the right frame, everything that's happening is, is like what's great about this, right? So I'm just giving you a lot of little nuggets here and there that would help frame this up as you go back and listen to this over and over because those things will start to fit in and you'll understand more what they mean. So what do I need to gain in skills to be able to inspire this level three and level four leader with certainty that their dreams are gonna become a reality? And there's a couple pictures that I want to pull up here. One of them is this one right here. So uh, this book right here, the 45 second presentation, Don Fela, it's what got Kathy Coover into networking. It's what got Jimmy Smith into networking. When they saw the power of, of uh, the, uh, the geometric progression of numbers, uh, when Kathy saw it at a meeting, she turned to Jim and she said, do you think I can do that? And Jim said, you'll do better. What she saw was basically what the principal and what Don Thayla was teaching in here. Same thing with Jimmy Smith when he said, I learned that I can eat my overhead and become insanely rich and I could fail 90% of the time and still be insanely rich. It was because they understood these numbers right here. So you have to devour this book, not just for you to know it, you gotta be able to teach it. So you're going to want to take that book and write it out and on paper, on a whiteboard, and talking while you're writing it out as though you're talking to this level three and level four leader. Right? you got to develop this skill and make PowerPoints around. Maybe you've never made a PowerPoint before, but maybe you need to be making a PowerPoint in order to be able to show this person you know, so they'll see it when they're sitting in the room. Um, Wallace Waddle says, if you neglect to do anything that you get an idea to do, you have no idea how far reaching the consequences were on that because you didn't follow through. Then this didn't happen. This domino effect didn't happen. This chain reaction didn't happen, which would have led to this, the level three and level four leader. Whatever you get an idea to do, you've got to just make it happen, right? It doesn't mean you're going to be perfect at it. That's a law of repetition. You get better and better the more times you do it. So you've really got to devour this book to teach it, not to know it for yourself, but to articulate it, because you're going to need to articulate this to this person. Now, what we're going to aim for is doing that like Don Fela would. Don has created three organizations with this principle that he's teaching in this book. Three different organizations and three different network marketing companies of over 100,000 associates. So I think he knows what he's doing. It's the same thing that got me excited about the business was the principles that are being taught in here. That's why I made PowerPoints about it and that's why I still talk about it today. 
All right, now we want to be able to do that. So we're going to reach for being able to do that as clearly and effectively as Don Fela does. But we want to reach for a higher way of doing that. And we want to do that like Tony Robbins would. Tony Robbins is a billionaire in people development. So Tony Robbins has made a billion dollars in people development. And so uh, you want to be able to, the, the, to shoot for the stars would be do Don Fela like Tony Robbins would in, in educating and inspiring people to take further action. If you shoot for that and you fall and you hit the moon, you're platinum all day long, you guys. So how do we do Don Fela like uh, Tony Robbins? Well, get this audio on YouTube. It's called 30 Minutes for the Next 30 Years of Your Life. I've listened to it over 30 times. What happens when you listen to a song 30 times? You can sing it even without the song being played. So what's going to happen as I listen to Tony Robbins over and over, and when I don't feel like it, I listen to him anyways, and I make sure I listen to him every day, multiple times a day. Start writing down the things that he says. Uh, in the gym, I'll text them to myself. Today, I started making my three by five cards out of what he's saying. I want to like get that wording down. I want to get that phrasing down. And I want to get it down in a way that I apply it to the things that I want to present to people. So I want to see how can I frame what he just said, which is so important to when I'm talking to that high level three or four leader. I want to apply it there in, in the way that it has meaning with what I'm presenting. So if you play on that level, you guys, and, and you're doing your identity, it's done. I'm telling you, this is the skill. So what do we want to do? I want to frame this up for you so you're absolutely clear on the actions you need to take, not leaving anything to chance. He's going to teach you the power of two, the power of three, the power of four, and the power of five. And I show this in my presentation at every presentation. And then in training, I show the power of two, consultant, right? In trainings, I go into the power of five, two, three, four, and five. So what we want to show here is how does our compensation plan relate to this? Because he doesn't frame that up in the book on how this relates to the isogenics comp plan, but we could literally manifest this principle with just the power of two and hit 250 cycles a week just with the power of two so we want to be able to get that across to our level three and level four leader because trust me they're looking for a business opportunity they've capped out or something's happened in the company they were with like literally as somebody's been doing this you guys i'm not making this up as we've been doing this template and they've been doing their identity they found a leader their company had just um, change their comp plan, went sideways on everybody, and they're looking for a home. And this person literally called the person that was doing the vision work on this level, called them, said, I'm interested. I'm ready. I think I'm ready to get started. So um, what we want to show them is how the compensation plan is going to help them reach the goals that they want, literally take the ceiling off. If you do this like Tony Robbins and Don Fela, they're going to see that the sky is the limit. All right, so unlimited potential. So what we want to show them is that consultant is literally, um, you know, what you, the qualifier to make unlimited income. You can become the top income earner as a consultant, the power of two. You enroll two people and you can make unlimited income. All right, uh, the next thing we want to show is the 100 BV. That's the qualified order, right? So we know we need to order a, a certain amount of BV every month. That's the qualified order. So when you can show them that they're going to be paying less than they are for their groceries now, they're going to give up uh, some habits like Starbucks. And so they're going to save more money there. And the benefits that they're going to get from the forever pack, because it's more than 100 BV, done. Like the benefits of supporting their telomeres and replacing a meal a day, that's their qualified order for what? to get unlimited income. And that the 6% is what we're gonna pay them on unlimited debt. Well, let's, let's frame it up. I like using the word unlimited, but let's use uh, on everyone. You get paid 6% on everyone in the entire organization, not just the people you enroll. You get paid 6% on everyone on unlimited debt. Well, there you go. 
unlimited income. The consultant, 100 BV and 6%. If you can teach that and relate all of that to our products, and also, again, you, you've got to, you know, be able to articulate the power of the forever pack. Right, so don't just send them to a video. I don't like when they say, don't be a tool, use the tools. No, you need to be a tool. You need to do this in a way that you know, nobody else can. You need to do it to where you're, they can't replace you. This is what Bob Rocker says, so does Wallace Waddles. You gotta be unreplaceable. This is the value you're gonna add to these leaders. That should be a big aha right there, value added. How did you add the value? Well, you put in the time, energy, and effort, and the identity work to create yourself, to be able to present this to them a way that inspires them. So you just educated, that came from you. That's the intrinsic value within you. We're not talking about the value of the products or the comp plan. We're talking about what you bring to the table as a leader for this level three and level four leader. You just educated and inspired them. You gotta be, you gotta shoot for being, you know, irreplaceable, is that the right way to say it? Unreplaceable, like you're going for teaching this better than anybody. You're not gonna send them to a video and hope that the video does the deal. You're gonna do it. And I'm telling you, you only need to do it with a few three and four level leaders. They'll start creating their own organization without you. And they'll develop millionaires in their downline. And if that's your identity and you just inspired them and now they're off to the races, they will need a little help from you but it's, not, it's low maintenance and high output. And it's gonna get to the point where you're not hearing from them anymore. Don't take that personally. That's just who they are. You know, these are reds. These are people that are going for it. And uh, it's about them creating the environment and the business that they want for them and their family. And a lot of times making the impact that they wanna make in the world. So this is the value added. Remember, you don't get something for nothing. This is the value that you're going to add to those people that come in. And that's how it works, you guys. Um, you, you do gotta know about the products enough to where you can inspire them that these are not hype, it's not exaggerated, that we're pioneering stuff, and that this is a game changer for humanity. All right, see if I left anything out there um, on this part. Pretty much frame that up. So not only are we, we got the vision part in here, we have the skill set that you need to accomplish on a four level leader. And the thing is, as, as you're creating the identity, you will pick up things here that you weren't picking up before. I've already seen it from people that have created the identity. They're seeing things that I've trained on for years and they're like, they're acting like it's the, when they, when they come across it, they're acting like it's the first time they've ever had it presented to them. I'm like, yeah, that's what I've been training on for 14 years. You know, but the reason they're seeing it now is because of their RAS system. It's called the reticulated activating system. And Tony talks about it in this video. The RAS system filters things out and lets things into your brain. You couldn't take all the information that would come in. Billions of bits of information are coming in. It overwhelmed your system. So the RAS system kind of protects you that way. Now that your identity is a fourth level leader that's maxed out, you're going to see the principles that you didn't see before from Don Fela, the way Don uh, Tony talks, the way the products are you know, presented to people and who you are and how powerful of a presenter you are, you'll start to see that your brain's gonna let it in. And so it accelerates your ability to do that. There's two things happening. It's an excel, remember it's the greatest labor saving device identity, but you've also gotta do the work. I shared this and some of you have heard me say this when I picked up motocross. I saw myself on the podium. I knew, I know how this works. And uh, I could feel my body doing things skill-wise that blew me away and how fast I developed on the motocross track. And I shared with a guy out there, I said, yeah, I've only been doing this for six months. He's, and he's trying to keep up with me on the track and his truck was right next to mine. We kind of were chatting. And he's all, I've been doing this since I was four years old. You've been doing this since for six months? There's something different about you. That's what he said, it literally came out of his mouth. There's something different about you. I, I'm not saying that like to pridefully and, and to brag. I'm saying it's the greatest labor saving device. That power was taking over my nervous system, my motor skills. I felt it while I was on the track. Why? Because my state demanded that. 
right? So you'll learn these things as you're, you're, you're doing both things. You see how it's absolutely essential you're working on identity and it's absolutely essential that you're working on the skills. I've given you the skills to work on here. Don't get distracted by what other trainers and leaders are teaching from the stage. They don't have the whole blueprint printed out here and they just feel like that's an important piece because they've been inching along incrementally, all right? We're doing this from a bird's eye view on what needs to be in place. You'll start to develop those other skills where you can be training from the stage later on, right? You'll, if you want to, you know, as you start, if you want to start presenting in front of groups of people uh, uh, that you just rock it, then write that into your identity, okay? But right now, let's just focus on the main things, all right? Make sure you're putting the cycles and the money in there too, because that's the target. And, and that's the, the compelling evidences that need to be there. And then the comp other compelling ev supporting evidences is around the money, all right? Now, what we wanna do is be asking a lot of you. So as you're doing all of this, you wanna make sure that you're not going into deception, that you're not betraying yourself. And so that's why the journaling every night you're going to critically think about the day that just went by and, and identify where you betrayed in two areas. So you're going to journal this out with your physical actions and your mental actions. Remember, we're still doing the uh, level one, two, and three uh, actions, right? Um, if you have a bigger group, you're going to see how fast that group starts to develop and you're, you're not doing as much of this. Uh, John Maxwell says, over 80% of your efforts are up here now. And uh, again, I didn't really finish it off, but you're straddling where you're at now in your identity. You're doing this with a whole different attitude. Your attitude is, I get to do this. I love to do this. I don't have to do it. You're, that's because you're staying in the identity over here. You're maxed out. So you don't have to do it. That changes your identity. You're not like dependent and like just putting all your eggs in this one person, this one person's got to do it. If they don't do it, I'm ruined, right? You're doing this with a whole new attitude. And while I was working as a mechanic still, I wasn't going into mechanicing because I had to. I just went in and it was just part of my daily, you know, methods of operation. It was part of my daily activities. And while I was at work, my attitude was way up here. Why? Because I'm so grateful for the life that I'm living. And so I was doing things that other people never did as a mechanic. I was outgrowing that position through excellence. And so my attitude was better, way better. I was waxing the lifts. I was cleaning the tool room. Nobody had ever cleaned that tool room. It took me like three days to clean it. And I was doing it in between working on cars, which I had to do to keep getting paid. But I just did it with an incredible attitude. I did it with an attitude of a millionaire. And people could see it, you guys. They could see it. They, they knew something was up. And nobody ever said, oh, what are you doing? That's so stupid. No way. My energy and my attitude overpowered that. There was no way they were going to try and bring me down. They didn't even attempt it. Because my attitude was so high, they're like, what's up with him? Or they knew I was going somewhere. They didn't know where, but they just knew that I had this confidence and my certainty around, about me. And uh, it couldn't be denied. So you want to, Wallace Wallace calls that outgrowing your current position. So what happened is because the identity and while I was working at work, I wasn't a mechanic anymore. Literally when I put my uniform on, it physically started to make my stomach upset. Like it didn't feel right. And because I mean that I, I maintained that identity while I was working on cars, I was reading books in the bathroom. I was acting like I was going to the bathroom and I'm reading books, right? And I was listening to the tapes, the right ones from Bob Proctor in the cars. And uh, it was like the hand of God just came down and said, you are now an oak tree. You're no longer an acorn. And whoop, put me right into full-time isogenics in four and a half months. And that was freaky. It was a little scary. But Carrie, with her support, she's just like, go for it, right? And so, um, you know, I had never been paid from a network marketing company full-time. I always was getting a paycheck from being a mechanic for like 15 years. It was so, like, I had to be ready for that transition. I had to have the courage to embrace and accept that, even though it wasn't part of my paradigm in a certain way. So, you know, again, that's what happened. So now, just throwing that out there, because the transition period, like, when it's time for you to leave, like, you, you've got to be, you got to have the courage and be ready to do it. 
Now, I didn't betray though. So the point was, we're talking about betraying. So you want to catch yourself at night. When am I betraying? Because when you're betraying, you're not over here. And what do I mean by not being over here? You're not keeping the identity, which you have to continually be putting into you. You have to continually be putting in consciously that state. So if we look at this slide here, that's not your, your habitual way of identity, right? It's not your habitual identity. So the moment you stop putting the identity, what's happening? You're going back to the old identity. This is the vision of where you want to be. This is the vision that you've written up in the life. But this is where you are. This is your habits, your patterns, and your subconscious. And you have to raise your standards. Yes, in what you're doing, but mostly mentally you have to raise your standards. So we're going to want to, we want to find out and discover, am I betraying these standards? Am I defaulting and going down to these standards mentally? So uh, that's a high level of accountability and nobody's going to make sure you do that but yourself. Um, but once you raise those standards, so what was I going to say here? This, once you stop consciously putting in your new identity, and that's why I put 30, 60, 90 days, you don't have to do it forever. The hardest is going to be the first 30 days, like literally doing it every day. That's the hardest because you're going right up against your old paradigm and your old habits and your old standards. And so it's the hardest. But as you do it, it gets easier and easier and easier. And then eventually this becomes your new standard, your new habitual standard. So I put out 30, 60, 90. And uh, standard means an approved model. I looked it up today, an approved model. So this is the model that you've got to raise your standards to is consciously putting that, that identity. And people have said, man, it wears you out more than working out. Holding your standard mentally, at the end of the day, I felt like I was hit by a Mack truck. But it was only in the beginning. And it was willpower. It's like starting a new workout. You know, if you never worked out before in the beginning of the year, you start working out. Usually you're like, you, you, if you, have, you fight it so hard and then your willpower wears off and you go back to your old standard. You're not working out anymore. You guys, you can't let off here. The moment you let off your identity, subcon even though you're not doing anything bad, like negative, if you're not putting in this higher standard of thinking about that identity, you're going to default to the old pattern subconsciously. It's going to be your cruise control. Even if it's not anything bad, it's not the new identity. So what are you not attracting to you? This standard up here, okay? So we wanna catch ourselves and it's been awesome. People are doing it because we can see it in black and white. I mean, it's right here, it's pretty clear. It's pretty evident what it's gonna take. So each new thing that we're adding, this is not about personal development. This is about literally, you know, knowing and doing, not just being a hearer of the word, but doing it. And we could see the word pretty clearly here. If you're not doing the identity, you're betraying. So it might be somebody that cuts you off on the road that day. And all of a sudden you're mad. Like they didn't have the right to cut me off. I had the right of way. And don't they know who I am? Who do they think they are? You know, and then you're on their bumper and you're like irate and you're following them around for 10 minutes. And then that causes you to think about other bad negative things because you've been holding that negative vibration, which goes into a momentum the other way. And then you're trying to get a parking spot and somebody pulls in right before you, you know, and there's another bad thing. While you're doing that, you're self-betraying and you're not putting in your new identity. And what happens if you're not putting in your new identity? You're not attracting to you. Those divine doors aren't going to open. And you, you've got to hold yourself on this level of accountability. And you got to think anyway. So you might as well think about something that's going to serve you and not be acted on. So this is acting on. You're now... Uh, a, this is the highest achievement that you can develop within you to think the thoughts and feelings that you want to think, not the ones that are suggested or placed on you. So we could say the guy that did that, that pulled in front of you and cut you off and it caused you to do that. You were acted on. You're not acting on all the opportunities you were acted on. It, it caused you to think something outside of you caused you to think in a certain way. Well, you're self betrayed. How are you self betrayed? Because you're not putting in the new identity. And Lenny asked me once on a phone call, he said, so Dave, how often do you do that? How often do you like, they call it an hour of power or going to the movies or um, your, your vision work, your meditation, you know, how, 
how often do you do that, Dave? And I said, well, I try to find the times when I'm not doing it and I get back to doing it because I know it needs to become my new identity habitually. So in the beginning, it's not. So there's lots of times during the day when you can do that, like cooking, you could do that, you know, without having to think. And usually your mind's thinking about, you'll start to be aware of what your mind's thinking about while you're cooking. It's not about cooking, it's about something else. So you wanna catch yourself at the end of the day, when did I self betray? When was I not thinking about my identity? You play on that level, you guys, and you hold yourself to that high of accountability. That's standards, that's raising your standards. That's raising your, your fundamentals. And uh, Tony Robbins asked Michael Jordan, what makes Michael Jordan great? Is it God-given talent? You know, what is it? And he said, well, you know, yeah, there's God-given talent, but I worked on it. I developed it through the fundamentals and the discipline that I had around the fundamentals. He said, I hold myself to a standard that no other human being would hold themselves to when it comes to practicing the fundamentals every day. And so you hold yourself to that level of doing this. And there are people who are doing it and they're recognizing, they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe the stuff I'm betraying my goals with, my dreams, the things that are the most important to me. I can't believe those little things are doing it. So every night, identify the actions, both physically and mentally, and really mentally, both, but mentally, um, as has got to be your, like, if, if you had to put one in front of the other, they're both essential, mentally in front of the physical, because the mental will start to change the physical. And so you want to identify what was that action? What happened? Well, the guy cut me off. What was my justifications? Well, I had the right away. Um, you know, that's how it works in this country. We have laws and, you know, I'm important. And that person, you know, is whatever, right? What were all the justifications you used for staying in that self-betrayal? You're not doing this to beat yourself up. You're doing it to consciously become aware of what took you off track subconsciously, habitually. And if you do this every night, you're going to start to see the patterns that you have clearly. And you won't spend 15, 20, two hours betraying yourself. You'll catch yourself quicker, maybe at five minutes. And then what happens when you caught yourself? You make a U-turn and you come back and you start getting down the efficient actions. I, I, I guarantee you this is the stuff that's happening to you. It's not a matter of if you'll find them. You're going to find them. So you're going to find you're going through the day, do, 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 you're doing your identity and something pulls you off. Now, do I spend 15, 20 minutes, two hours going down that? Or do I go, do, 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 I mean, I'm advancing now and I, I go off track, but I caught myself and I go back down this efficient action. I remember Lenny saying, do you think Jimmy gets upset? You know, and he was making a statement. He wasn't asking a question. And he was like, do you think he gets upset? Set? If something bad happens to Jimmy Smith, maybe five seconds, no more than five minutes. And he's back on to thinking what he wants to think about. Because look at the results he gets in his life. He's living that fairy tale dream come true life. And so what happens now is as we do this and we're, and we're refining, we're becoming more and more familiar and we're eliminating those things, what's going to happen is you're going to catch them right in the moment, in the very moment that the thing happens and you stay right down here. Guess what that's called? Law of non-resistance, called LNR. Your LNR things in the very moment that they happen. That's a very powerful, disciplined individual. And you will go from one magnificent win to the next. As long as you have all this other stuff framed up, I mean, you could be a positive thinker and not accomplish anything. You've got to have things framed up correctly. And we have it all here. Customers, business partners, the value that you're going to add as a leader. And that's why you're attracting other leaders and they're moving forward. We have it all framed up. And then we have the vehicle of isogenics. Heaven on earth, you guys. So, um, so hold yourself to that level of accountability. Um, they're non-negotiable. These are non-negotiable things, doing your compelling vision every morning. Uh, your income producing activities. What are you going to do and how many hours a week when it comes to connecting with people? So here's another action you're going to take in the physical world. Now you're framing it up in the mental world, the kind of people you're working with, and you're going to maintain that even when people tell you no. You're going to maintain, I have an awesome, awesome customer base, right? So uh, Jim Rohn says 12 to 15 hours a week if you want to replace your income. Every week, 12 to 15 hours. 
I love uh, Tony Robbins in that 30 minutes for the next 30 years of your life. He says, people say, well, you know, I just don't have a lot of time. I don't, I'm wore out when I get home. And Tony's like, yeah, but what about your second eight hour shift? You know, you come home from work and then you get ready and you do another eight hour shift. He said, that's what I had to do. I got a job as a janitor where I can work my own hours at night for eight hours. I work till two o'clock in the morning. And you know, you got to put in that time. You don't get something for nothing. So when it comes to the income producing activities with building your business, that's connecting with people. All right, so we're gonna narrow that down, connecting with people. It's always the forever pack, you know, hey, uh, what are one or two things that you can improve with your health? You know, what would be at the top of the list? Oh, my knee hurts and I need more energy. Oh, do you know that's a telomere issue? Oh, what's a telomere issue? I mean, what's a telomere? And uh, uh, you say, oh my goodness, it's, it's Nobel Prize winning research. And, you know, if I could give you, just imagine for a minute, if those two things were gone from your life, like you had the energy and your knee was working like there was never anything wrong with it, what would that mean for you? Get them to think about that for a minute. Well, I would play tennis again, you know, and I would start working out again. And me and my wife would do more things. And, and so you're getting them to like, if those two things were gone, what would that mean for you? Yeah, it's a telomere issue, it's Nobel Prize, but just think for a second. Okay, if I could send you some information, so they tell you what that would mean for them. If I could send you some information, 10, 15, 20 minutes, and it will absolutely address that. The best case scenario gets rid of it in your mind. You know, the worst case scenario is that you have an incredible amount of hope that it's going to go away. So you're either certain it's gonna go away or there's a lot of hope that you can see now that it's gonna go away with that 10, 20 minute information. Would you watch it? There you go, right? So I'm connecting with a complete stranger. That would be a prospect. So we've got prospects. We've got customers and we have associates. You're connecting with prospects, customers, or associates. You're, what you're doing is you're educating them and inspiring them to take the next progressive step. So a prospect would be to follow up and get them enrolled. A customer would be to introduce them to more of the products and show them you know, on a deeper level how they can get their products paid for and then move them into an associate. An associate, to get them to a consultant and to get them their cycles going up, right? So that's connecting 12 to 15 hours of doing those, uh, not you know arranging your schedule and making the most beautiful scheduling system with flowers and pictures and columns that are awesome. You know, it, it's not your organizer. It's connecting with people, belly to belly, social media, three-way calls, uh, going out and. When I um, started my automobile shop, I didn't have any customers. And I went from working at the dealership to opening up my own repair shop. I went out and the way that I let people know about my business is I made flyers and I handed them to everybody. Flyers were going to everybody. When I came to a stoplight, if it was, uh, especially a Honda, because that's what I was trained in, certified in, I'd roll down the window and say, hey, 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 and I'd give them my uh, fluorescent orange flyer. Hey, I'm just opened a shop. I'm a Honda mechanic. I'm certified. Check that out. Half the price and, you know, and, and I'm certified. I gave them to everybody. I didn't have like a friend base that I could go out and do that with. Family didn't even live where I lived. I had to go out to strangers and like proactively let them become aware. And I did that with Isogenics too. I did the same thing with Isogenics. I just made up flyers and I went out and I presented it just like I did as a mechanic opening the shop. Okay. So connecting with people in the different ways that you can do that, all right? So again, those are non-negotiable. If you wanna have that income that's replacing your income at work and you want that six-figure income, you gotta put in 12 to 15 hours a week consistently with the right income-producing activities. So there's the, you know, did I, I, I framed out what hours and which days I'm gonna work. And I'm gonna show you, we're gonna go into detail on that, um, not to, you know, uh, chastise you when you don't do it, but so that you can refine your actions. If we get your efficient actions going this way with your income producing activities, you have to reach your goal. And the, doing the identity work is going to get you there very quickly. It's the greatest labor saving device and it gets you from point A to B the fastest. So if you're doing all of these things efficient and Wallace Waddles has in The Science of Getting Rich a whole chapter on efficient actions, 
If you're doing more efficient actions than you are doing inefficient actions, you have to reach your goal. The more time you spend on doing those efficient actions, the faster you get to your goal. That's why I replaced my income in four and a half months because I did more than 12 to 15 hours a week and I did actions that leveraged me in those 12 to 15 hours. That's how I replaced my income in four and a half months. So we've got this all framed up right here. You also wanna make sure that you and your team are getting the training and the videos and the community support, all of that that we have, all right? Now, this next page, uh, you wanna figure out your days of operation, how many hours, and what income producing activities. What are the standards? Just be aware of what standards you're raising. Write them out here. You know, what standards do I need to do? Oh, I need to think and be more consciously aware of what I'm thinking. I need to be like working on my identity and really getting that smooth and seamless. That's what it says right here. Complete a seamless, flowing, compelling vision. And you have all of these parameters built into it. Sentences, paragraphs, chapters. And when you read it every day, what time of the day are you going to read it? You want to feel it, experience it, live it, connect to it. The goal is to create a state of gratitude, right? So we're really refining what your income producing activities are and who you're becoming. And this will light you up, you guys. You, a little investment in character and personality will return to you a million fold, multi-million fold. And you will feel so good. It will be a life that you put time and effort that was worthy of your time and effort. What are you trading your life for right now and who you have the capability of becoming? You know, what are you trading your life for? You start putting your life and your time and your effort into this stuff, you, you, you're not going to regret it. And uh, what is Tony? He mentions that, uh, who did he say was his mentor on it? Uh, Jim Rome. He said, an ounce of re, uh, uh, regret weighs tons and discipline weighs ounces. The, the, the feeling of regret weighs tons and the feeling that you get from having to raise your standards, like to do the discipline, the feeling of, uh, you know, that discipline creates weighs ounces. And so when you look back on your life, and this is what lights you up, it's progress that lights you up and it's really what you're looking for. It's not the things, don't get mixed up there. So, all right, so there's that slide, 30, 60, 90 days. In 30 days, you'll already see things that are happening, but it'll be intertwined with things that are negative, things that are bad that are still happening. You gotta LNR those. Don't self-betray on those, stay on the identity. Lynn Hagenhorn said, well, I was ready to do the meeting. I had everything ready downstairs. My husband was gonna open the door when people showed up. For three meetings that she held, nobody came downstairs. She was down there ready to do the meeting. She disciplined herself. She stayed in the identity. She actually did the meeting and, and she imagined feet coming down the stairs. That would be the identity work, right? She imagined feet coming down the stairs three times. Nobody showed up. The fourth time, she says it was the most crazy thing. Feet kept coming down the stairs. They just kept coming. They didn't stop. They kept coming down and she rocked the meeting. So there's going to be bad things and good things happening in this 30 days, even in the 60 and 90 days, but they will be less and less if you're literally holding yourself to that discipline to not self-betray. Things in the physical world do start to show up in the 30 days. God's universe likes to work with speed. Um, and then in 60 days, it's just like this just gestation period in the physical world. They start to show up. It starts to become your experiences. At 90 days, people are wondering what the heck you're doing. 90 days and beyond, you maintain that level. And uh, it was only another 30 days and I had replaced my income. And everybody wanted to know what the heck I was doing. And because I didn't stop, I wanted to continue to develop as a leader. I was writing that in. And people are saying, I can't believe how much you've changed. Like, you're a totally different person. And so, you know, that was the physical manifestation and the, and the confirming compelling evidences. Now, here's an example of what you want to do to hold yourself accountable on a high level. So Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you're going to frame up uh, what days am I going to be doing what? So vision work, I'm okay with putting the vision work in as part of your hours. Um, but remember, you, your business hours are 12 to 15 hours. That's connecting with people. This is connecting with people, but it's on a spiritual level. But I'm going to say the 12 to 15 hours, you can put this in your hours. 
but just hold yourself accountable if you really want to go fast, 12 to 15 hours of connecting income producing activities. This is the highest level of income producing activity though. So somebody said, I do my vision work from six to 6.30 and let's just say they missed two days. They should be checking every day, but they didn't get to check Wednesday and Sunday because they didn't do it. So normally they should be spending three to five hours in their quiet place of doing the vision uninterrupted before everybody wakes up. They hit 2.5 hours, should have hit 3.5. Uh, this is it's, when performance is measured, performance improves. So we're measuring, oh man, I'm really committed to this and I missed two days. I'm going to do better this next week. I'm going to hit it all seven days. And we're not just assuming we did it like, if you don't measure it like this, you'll think, well, I did it at 10 o'clock in my head. It's not the same. This is the income producing activity you said you're going to do. If you didn't do it on this level, don't check it off. So here we are Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So I'm going to connect from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Did it, did it, did it. And actually, I did some more connecting on, uh, at this time during 11 to 1. I had some free time on Friday, which I normally don't have. And I did an hour and a half. And I did an extra hour. So there we are. I should have hit six hours, but I hit 8.5. Do you see how, like, you can't miss your goal if you're doing this? You have the right income producing activities. You have the right identity. And you're holding yourself accountable to actually doing them. You're not betraying on the actions. So you just go through here, right? So now you add up the totals. Well, in a perfect world, if I hit them all, I get 23 and a half hours. I actually hit 26 hours. Great job. Now I'm able to evaluate, hey, I did it. I did what I said I should do. All I got to do is keep doing that week after week. The compound effect has to bring it all into play. Be sure at the top, because I have this uh, filled out, uh, all right, it's not filled out on the next slide. Be sure you fill in what the income producing activity is you're gonna do when you get to these times. Uh, I had somebody said, well, I'm gonna do income producing activities. And I said, well, what is that? And they said, well, you know, whatever I can do at that time. No, 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 because you'll default to whatever's the easiest or you won't do it at all. It'll give you a justification to not like get started right away. Like you'll start scrolling through Facebook before you actually start connecting. It's connecting time. You could even put with prospects because that's all you have. Or you could put connecting with prospects for an hour, connecting with uh, customers for a half hour, right? So it's like when you know you're gonna make a shake, you just go right in for, for breakfast and you make the shake. But at lunchtime, you're doing you know, as a meal. If you don't know what you're gonna eat, you're like, what am I gonna eat for lunch? Dang it, I hate having to think about what I'm gonna eat for lunch. Uh, and then you default to something that whatever comes up, whatever, whatever you decide to have, right? I'm going to go to Jimmy John's today. Don't leave that to chance. Put in the income producing activity. And I also put which days here. It has the days listed here, but I want to know which days am I going to do this particular thing at that time. All right. So you're going the times of the and the days this way. So you'll see that on the next slide right here. So here's the slide that you can use. So when, and when, you, when you have an accountability partner, so when you performance is measured, performance improves, that's you, right? You're measuring your own performance. Nobody's gonna make sure you do that, but get an accountability partner in your organization and start doing this with your team, you know, your customers and your associates, or if it has to be somebody cross line, then do that. When performance is reported, the rate of improvement accelerates. Nobody likes to come up with empty boxes. They don't want to report that to anybody. And if you keep doing that day after day, it eats on you. And if you really want it, you're, you're not going to let that eating feeling win. You're going to start checking them off because you know you have to be accountable to somebody. So you're going to frame that up, write in which times of the day, which activities. Um, and this is going to be where you can print it up. Jen's going to put it in the units section in the Forever Pack business group. So you'll be able to print these up. They might be in there now. I had texted her, which, where was she gonna put them tonight? And she said in the units group. Uh, that's in the tabs up on the left side of the group in the files. So it's under units. Right here, you know, this is what I'm gonna finish up on. This is where the rubber meets the road. So if you're, uh, <clears throat> how many prospects did you, how many new prospects? And as you're doing this, in the beginning, it might be hard to come up with these numbers. You've been doing it for years or months. But eventually, it's, these are your weekly personal numbers. How many new prospects do I have in the pipeline this week? Let's say, okay, I've talked to eight people that are new, and I need to follow up with them. 
How many prospects this week did I turn into customers? One. How many customers turned into associates? Zero. How many associates turned to consultants? Could be one, just depends on how many people you're working with. But now we have the, I mean, this is the bottom line right here. This is what Isogenics wants to know when it comes to their numbers as a company and what are the CPAs hired for to see these numbers so they can see if they're growing or if they're going backwards. If they're going backwards, somebody needs to be fired. If they're going backwards, they need to provide more effective training for the associates, whatever. This is the numbers you're gonna go off of. There's no guesswork. There is absolutely no guesswork in any of this template. So now we're also gonna say, okay, I cycled one time last week, zero times two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I cycled two times, four weeks ago, I cycled once. These are the numbers we're gonna be looking for improvement on over the weeks. If they're not improving, it is very easy to identify where does the skill level need to go up? Where does the commitment need to go up? Where does the certainty level need to go up? It's very easy to identify. We can identify it all day long with everything that we have in place here. Now, as your team grows and develops, I put personally enrolled, you know, the people you personally enrolled in four generations. That's what Don Fela says, talks about, you know, uh, is being really responsible for those four generations. But if there are people working in your organization that are way deeper, like people that I work with, Willie, uh, you know, uh, Jojo, um, Malcolm, they're way beyond four generations, but I work personally with them. I, I would want to know their numbers. You know what? And so you could do it individually, which you wouldn't be able to do on this piece of paper. You're going to need to make your own free reading binder and have one of these for each person. So let's say that it was Malcolm, you know, or whoever, you know, I would have a three wing um, binder for Malcolm. And I would want to know what is personally, you know, what are the new prospects that he's brought in? And he brought in 10 that week. How many became customers? Seven. How many customers to associates? Uh, eight. How many associates to customers? I mean, how many associates to consultants for? What were his cycles? And then just go right down and for the last four weeks. And now I got a base to work off of with Malcolm. And we can see over the coming weeks what's going on. Totally evaluate it. And uh, this is high level stuff, you know, but treating it like a business. This is a high level business and the training here. I don't know anybody. I mean, even Tony Robbins couldn't go into this much detail with you uh, and your business on a weekly basis. I mean, this would cost tens of thousands of dollars for somebody to get this kind of mentoring and this kind of personal development and, and getting all of it figured out and put it in place. There it all is. So I'm just gonna, I'm getting tired here. I uh, probably ought to take another e-shot. What I love about these shots is that they're healthy and they make my body healthier and they give me the energy and mental clarity. It's not like drinking a Red Bull or a Rockstar, which I used to drink, which made my health worse and worse. These actually adaptogens, Olympic athletes take adaptogens. So, all right. Let me just see if there's any last thing. I mean, that was a lot. We went through a lot there, a uh, lot to digest. I would recommend watching it over and over. Print up the, the uh, forms. Um, you know, you can see here, again, just those four pages that we went over. Um, and, and utilize these, not just for you, yes, for you, but also start developing your teams with these. And I would say this goes along with the Freedom Day call that we have in the back end of foreverpack.com. But this is uh, like way more detail. Like this is PhD compared to that. Um, and then that's still effective. I'd go watch it and, and see what's in there uh, because there's things that we dialogue in there that we haven't uh, dialogued on here. Those training videos in the back of foreverpack.com um, and you go into the, the team login there's just some great stuff back there, great training videos and the connecting piece and steps one, two, and three. Go down and watch uh, uh, Consultant Machine. And that'll go right along with Don Fela. But don't go in there just to listen to it. Become the Don Fela, the Tony Robbins of Don Fela. Uh, write that into your identity. Write that stuff into your identity too, man. When fourth level leaders show up, I just like, I am so uh, good at, 
like it's amazing or I, you know, I very effectively am able to articulate and educate and inspire fourth level leaders to where they actually with certainty get it. They realize that isogenics is a vehicle they've been looking for their whole life. And uh, I had one uh, fourth level leader say, this is like stealing candy from a baby when I showed them the Don Fela and, and the leverage and how that works with isogenics. And, and they said, this is like taking candy from a baby compared to what I had to do. And so there I did it, right? But I framed up that identity to do that. Remember, the fastest way is not to work there, is to get your identity there and then do everything you know, that you know to do with excellence consistently. All right. Whew. I think that's it. I will get this on the YouTube and uh, yeah, I'm sweating. Uh, and we will make this a part of the uh, Empower to Have It All series. We'll make it an attachment to week eight. All right, you guys. Um, I'm going to go check out what you guys are doing on the Facebook Live and we'll see you guys on the next Zoom. Bye.